we'll be drawing an orange and an apple. We will be using some crepas, oil pastels. They come in a variety of colors, and these are the expressionist line. I'll also be showing you how to use some baby oil in combination with some cotton swabs for some blending techniques. Let's talk about our paper choice for today. I will be using a pastel paper pad. It comes in a variety of colors. Whenever I'm working in oil pastels, I like to work light to dark. So I'm starting with this very light yellow, the lightest one I had in the box. And I'm looking at the shapes of my fruit. So I notice that they are basically round. So I'm going to draw a round uh, shape, not perfectly round, but pretty much round for the apple. And then the orange is placed a little bit behind the apple. So there's uh, a little overlap going on. Now that I've got the basic shapes sketched out, I'm switching to my next lightest uh, color, which is going to be a regular yellow, to just sort of block in some areas on the orange and the apple wherever I see that it is lighter. And the apple especially has some parts that have like a yellow green to them. So the yellow is going to work great for that. Now I'm switching over to my lightest green and I'm using that on the apple where I see that there are some of those yellow green spots that I mentioned. So it's really about observing the fruit that you're working with because every piece of fruit is going to be completely different. So what you're drawing could be very different than what I'm drawing because I'm looking at my apple and my orange and yours is going to be different. Now I've picked up the lightest orange I have available and I'm using that mostly on the piece of orange fruit uh, and filling in some big areas to kind of get that local color blocked in. But this orange is also going to work in some parts on the apple where I see some lighter areas. I'm going to put this in as sort of the base color that will pretty much disappear by the time the, um, the apple is finished. Going on to the next orange in the box, I'm working that again on the orange piece of fruit and filling in some more areas where it's a little bit of a darker shadowed side to the orange. And also going back in and adding that as a layer on top of some of the parts that I already have done, uh, just to give this a little bit more dimensionality and depth. Now I'm working backwards. I'm picking up that lighter orange again working in a little bit more, sort of layering these colors, uh, just so that it, I'm filling in any of the spots that I see. It helps to blend the colors when you layer them like this as well. So this is a blending technique. And then going back with the yellow, doing the same thing, just working those colors. I'm doing the same thing now on the apple, using some of the lighter and darker reds, building up those layers, really filling in the local color of the apple, paying attention to where I see that um, this particular apple has like yellow or green spots and try not to color over those too much because I don't want them to completely disappear. Now I'm using the red to also build up some of the darker parts of the orange because it just didn't really have enough contrast the way it was. And this is helping me to kind of get those shadowed areas, those deeper, darker areas of the orange to stand out. Speaking of shadow areas, I'm bringing in some color theory using some green. This is going to blend because um, red and green are opposites on the color wheel, so that's a good way to build up your contrast and your shadow on a red object. The opposite for an orange object would be blue, so we're bringing in some blue for the orange for those contrast and shadow areas and layering that on there to really get that dimensionality, that depth, that shadow that's being cast um, by the apple onto the orange. Um, and just because of the position of the orange in relation to the light. And then going back in and layering it with other colors, layering with orange on top of the blue to kind of incorporate it and blend it a little bit better. Now to introduce the 
oil, baby oil blending technique. I've got some baby oil off to the side and I'm putting the cotton swab into that and then just taking it and rubbing it over where I've already drawn with the oil pastel. And that is going to blend the layers together and just break down the oils so that you've got that pigment just completely merging. It does pick up some of the oil pastel onto the cotton swab, but that's okay, that's to be expected. When you're changing to a different color area, you might want to either get a new cotton swab or at least use the clean end of it. That will help so that your colors don't get muddied. But other than that, you can go ahead and mix and blend as much as you feel you need to or would like to. After using the baby oil, you do not have to wait for that layer to dry or that baby oil to dry. You can go right back in on top of it with the oil pastels, especially if you look at your drawing and you feel like maybe you lost some of the brightness or it blended a little too much or you want to bring back some of the color that might have gotten overly mixed, you can go right back in and, and work right into your piece using the oil pastels directly on top of the blended color. Now the white oil pastel is really, really great for bringing out highlights, um, especially on fruit or anything that might have a reflection. So go right in after you feel like you've got all of your um, rest of your colors blended or layered the way you want them. As your final step for your object or your fruit, you can go in with the white directly on top and it pretty much will sit on the surface. It won't blend in to the other colors uh, too much. So that's why it's a really great finishing touch to really bring some dimension to your work. What you'll see now is I'm using a dry paintbrush just to get any of the little pieces off of the paper so that it does not smudge. In the same way that I reworked the orange, I'm just going into the apple now to do the same type of adding of layers to just bring back some of the brightness or bring back some of the colors that might have gotten lost or dulled in the blending with the oil, uh, baby oil, and then also to give a little bit more of the mark makings that I see on the apple, uh, just so that it has that richness in line with the orange. I'm introducing some brown for the stem. Uh, on the apple and bring in some of the shadow a little bit deeper just to really kick up that contrast and so that the stem does stand out from the apple. And then of course, of course, finishing with some of the uh, bright yellow and the white to get those highlights and bright spots. We're gonna start working on the shadow that's cast by the fruit onto the table. My go-to whenever I'm making a shadow is almost always blue. I feel like it works really great for shadow areas. So I'm laying in some shadow with that. I have a double light source, so it's sort of casting two shadows. Yours is gonna be different. Pay attention to how your light is reflecting and casting a shadow. Then I'm adding in some orange because that's getting cast from the orange and a little bit of green is being cast onto my surface from the apple. Now I'm using that oil, baby oil, to blend some of the color that I put down and just to get it so that it looks like it's been just as worked as the apple and the orange were. And it does pick up color onto that cotton swab, which you can then use to really blend onto the paper. You can go back in and add more oil pastel on top, especially if you feel like it's not quite reflecting the shadow the way you have observed it. Just keep working it and looking back at what your fruit in your shadow looks like to try to get a realistic representation. Now I'm just going to list out the colors that were used for this particular drawing in case you happen to be using 
the crepas expression as oil pastels and you're curious to know which colors in more or less the order that they were introduced for this particular exercise. All right, so there you have it. Um, feel free to give this a try on your own. You can even try using other kinds of oils instead of baby oil as a blending medium.